Welcome back. It's still the breakfast and plus TV Africa away from all of that. Now we'll be moving on next to our next uh, feature, which is off the press and analysis of the front pages of major headlines uh, this morning. And we have uh, as our analyst for this morning, G.D. Johnson, senior lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism here in Lagos. He'll be joining us shortly to review um, all of the hot uh, uh, gist on and topics uh, on the page. Day list this morning. Maureen, you have the first paper. All right. Well, I'll start with the Guardian newspaper. The Guardian newspaper leads with after eight years and 5.9 billion naira on Nigeria Air, Minister scores self 100% on failed carrier MRO airport concessions. You have details of that on page four, pages four and five. That's their big story. Ministers cost self 100% on failed carriers, MRO, airport concessions. When you go down a bit, you have PEPC, INEC, Tinubu, APC kick against Atiku's request for live telecast of proceedings. You have details of that on page three of the Guardian newspaper. Nigeria hopeful of $32.5 billion oil project as NNPC eyes 1.8 million barrels per day in July. Details of that you get on the Guardian newspaper. And then failed Ijara Bridge. Residents blame shoddy job, lack of supervision. Details of that is on page 8 of the Guardian newspaper. That's the much I'll take from The Guardian. Away from The Guardian now, uh, I'll move on next to the Daily Independent uh, newspaper with the lead story this morning. I'm back as national chairman. No more faction in LP. That's according to Abure. Then just below the pictorial, the Nigerian Airlines decry high interest rate insurance premium with a rider air piece uh, Expense uh, 60 billion naira on aircraft maintenance in 2022. Above the mustard, other stories making headlines this morning. FG Moore's legal framework for presidential transition programs uh, releases timetable for Tinubu Shatima's inauguration. Buhari confers highest national honor on Tinubu on May 25. Corruption allegations like Magu Bawa must. Quit now face pro panel CSOs tell federal government. Other stories are uh, on the left term side of the daily independent Zamfara governor on the probe for alleged 70 billion naira fraud uh, EFCC. NPC spends 200 billion naira in census preparations. Uh, that's according to Quara. Crack in G7 as Dogoa, two other speakership aspirants, back Abbas. Wiki tackles by Yelsa government over demolished property. And PEPC, that's the Presidential Election Petitions Court, reserves ruling on Atiku's request for live broadcast. AFDB, African Development Bank, approves $15 million loan for infra credit to boost capital. On the red strip below, manufacturers expended over six, 760 or 76 points. 7 billion naira on alternative power in the second quarter of 2022. You can find details on page 13. Uh, those are all of the stories on the front page of the Daily Independent newspaper. Okay, from the Daily Independent, we'll go to the Punch newspaper. And the Punch is leading with Tinubu's inauguration. Programs begin Thursday. And FG invites over 65 world leaders, the riders. Stay away from inauguration venue if you don't have business there. That's from the Secretary General of the Federation. And Buhari hands over transition documents to incoming President Thursday. NYSC at 50, Buhari grants 65 ex coppers automatic employment scholarship. You have details of that on page 8. Two held over U.S. consular official killing. Details of that is on page 7. Matawale diverted 70 billion naira with 100 firms, EFCC alleges. Details of that is also on page 7 of the Punch newspaper. 
Ocean workers protest as Adelike begins payroll audits. Ha. <laughs> you have details of that on the Punch newspaper. And on the masthead, above the masthead, you have federal allocation drops again as FG states share 655 billion naira. Details is on page 17. Live broadcast threat to tribunal judges' lives. Tinubu lawyers, uh, Tinubu's lawyer. Page 7 is where you find details of that. NNPCL begins crude supply to Dangote refinery next week. Details of that you find on page 24. Well, that's the much will be taken from the headlines of the punch. All right, uh, the final paper we will review is the nature of news. The main story for this morning, FG, uh, Niger Basin Authority partner on climate change adaptation fund environmental services, other stories are global temperatures will soar to record level in five years. That's according to the WMO. Let's see if we can take one or two more to, so we can get back to G.D. Johnson. Nigeria loses um, 80 or 800,000 children yearly to malnutrition. That's according to the World Bank. 19 wrestlers arrived to Tunisia for 2023 African Wrestling Championship. Those are all of the stories on the Nature News this morning. All right, so we've been joined by Mr. Jide Johnson, Senior Lecturer, Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Uh, he's joined us uh, from Lagos here. And um, good morning, Mr. Jide Johnson. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Dr. Justin. And good morning to our viewers all over the world. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for having me. Good, good to have you join us. Um, so many interesting issues here on the headlines. But let's begin with... One of the headlines on uh, the Punch newspaper, above the masthead you have NNPCL begins crude supply to Dangote refinery next week. Um, how well, that's, that's, that's good news. Um, if that is followed to the latter, that's good news. And we see the, the implication of that investment, one, on the local economy, two, on the supply chain of petroleum products across the length and breadth of Nigeria, and also on the conversation on the removal and non-removal of oil subsidy um, with, with respect to what government spends in importing the crude, now that we are having local production, mm -hmm. and from the capacity of what we know of the local production that will come from Dangote refinery, we should also be supplying other, other, other neighboring countries, and then that should also enable us to generate um, foreign Foreign, foreign, foreign hunting. So, hopefully, we see how it goes, and um, and how the implication, the overall implication, it's it's, it's a welcome development. So, let's see. Uh, probably that we also encourage other state government, another private individual to make investment in the oil and gas sector, because if we have the refinery. Uh, it has it, it has a ripple effect on the overall on the overall economy. Not only do we refine uh, the products, there are also allied industries. Apart from the refined product you get from crude oil, mm -hmm. there are also allied industries that benefit from the byproduct. When you talk about the petrochemical industry, that benefit from it. So let's see and let's hope that indeed uh, the refinery will, will start its operation. And it will be a challenge to the federal government that has not been able to do anything concerning our refineries in Wari, in Potakot, and in Kaduna. Yeah, the byproducts, you know, there have been lots of questions about the byproducts uh, that we should have been benefiting from all of this, all this while, especially because we do export the crude. And then questions have been what about the byproducts? Why are we always talking about fuel and diesel alone? And, and then of another question that, um, it's been raised about the Angote refinery is, and you have said that it would eventually be selling to neighboring countries. Does that mean that we'll be able to have enough for national consumption from this refinery, added to the yeah, little that we, NNPC gives? Uh, the, the, the challenge is that we don't have actual figure from NNPC with respect to local consumption because of the issue of subsidy or no subsidy and the case of round tripping or no round tripping. But when you have a private investor investing, putting down you, you 
tend to have records, there will be some measure of accountability. For, for the first time, we'll be able to know what we consume uh, locally. And if what Dangote is pumping into, in, 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 into, the Nigerian, into the Nigerian market is factored in, then we have a clear picture of where whether there is shortfall or whether there is a need for us to supplement what Dangote is doing. But at least we have taken a decisive step. A decisive step in the sense that it's not 100% of the petroleum products we've been consuming over the years that we start consuming now. Mm -hmm. At least we have a certain percentage, a certain percentage coming from the local market. And that itself, we see was a lot of foreign exchange because we see a lot of foreign exchange. Also, we also reduce the burden which subsidy has placed on our economy. And then we will be able to receive wastages in government because nobody actually know the actual um, number or the actual amount of petroleum product we consume locally. Because when you begin to bandy the figures, you begin to wonder, do we actually consume this, this amount mm. of yeah. barrels in, in, in Delhi? Because somehow, um, because government is subsidizing it, there's a lot of undercurrent that goes on with this particular sector. There's no transparency in the sector. There's no doubt about that. We have supra institutions, not even super, supra institutions, institutions that are bigger than the state. One is the NNPC, which nobody but they lose any account of NNPC. They, may, they said they have, a, they have privatized they com, they have privatized NNPC. Nobody knows. There's no measure of transparency. The second one is Central Bank. You saw what the Central Bank did with, with the Naira. And then if you look at the way we have had access to, current, to, to currency in the, last, in the last one, two months, and compared to the hardship we suffered December, January, and February, you begin to wonder something is really wrong. Because you can't even see the new currencies, the old currency that is in circulation. So if you have this amount of currency in circulation, why are we put it as to pay? <coughs> no, the All same right. thing applies to the oil and gas sector. We have this oil in abundance. And then what you don't need any rocket science to set up a refinery. But for more than 40 years, our refineries have been moribund. They, they, they've been degraded, they, 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 they've not been in, in, in operation. But we're now seeing a private investor coming in in less than 15 years and has been able to put that into, into operation. So all we need to do is to hope and pray that, that this will be a game changer. And another thing is the fact that we may not uh, end up buying fuel at the cost that we are being told we may end up buying it when subsidy gets removed. Yeah. Since, since uh, the cost of importing... Uh, uh, you know, fear yeah, exactly. will be out of the way. The, the bottom line is that there is competition. Once you bring that competition, the market forces will determine the prices you pay. But the situation whereby it's government that is importing the foil, now giving it to various distributors to distribute, and then they will also add, you add landing cost, you add all manners of cost that mm -hmm. they will put in place, and at the end of the day, the bond, the, the burden is bare by the final, by the final, by the final, by the, by the final consumer. Both Let's 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 hope for the best because if you grew up, if you belong to my generation, you understand that in Nigeria we have you you can decide to buy in the seventies, in the early eighties we have super, we have yeah we have premium. People used to call there's premium motor spirit, there's super motor spirit. You know different grades, hmm. just like you have in the oil you used to service to service your car. You know you have different grades of oil, engine oil to serve. It's the same way we have different of grade of petroleum products in Nigeria. And you wonder, how did we get here? Mm -hmm. How did we find ourselves in this situation, in this circumstance, where we have one of the best crude oil in the world, which is bread crude? One of the best. Yes. All right, uh, Jide, uh, let's uh, look at all the stories. Uh, we'll move on to the Daily Independence newspaper. Um, the LP story or leadership crisis is... Um, their main um, focus uh, for today. Uh, it is captioned this way, I'm back as national chairman, no more faction in LP Aburi. I'm sure you have been following the development over time. So how do you react uh, with this uh, well, uh, story? Um, well, the, 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 once a court of higher jurisdiction take over a matter, there's an appeal. And once that appeal is until that is dispensed, you go back to the status quo ante, which means that Aburi is still the chairman of because there was there was another by the uh, federal uh, federal High court in Abuja so suspending Aburi, which gives Apapa the right of to leadership of the party as as the acting chairman as deputy national chairman. However, it's, it's gone on, on appeal and because it's gone on appeal um, to appeal the judgment of of the federal 
High Court Abuja, and the appeal court has ruled in this favor. So, um, what you wait is until that particular case is still dispensed. Um, Abu is the chairman now. Um, by that, by that, by that judgment, prior to that judgment, based on the judgment of the appeal court, because of the suspension, Apapa will be the acting chairman. But based on the appeal court judgment, because Abu that appeared before it, so now based on that on that pronouncement by the appeal court. They vacated that is the chairman, but that has that has not brought an end to 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 the improbably facing labor because the matter is still is still in court until there's a final ruling. Mm -hmm. Until that is final ruling, these various factions will be laying claim or no claim to the to the leadership of the party. But based on judicial precedent, um, the a court of higher jurisdiction, which is the appeal court, has ruled on the matter until except the Supreme Court gives the contrary for now. Uh, pending the determination of the case, Aburi will still be the national chairman of 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 the labor of the labor of the labor party. And I think that uh, beyond beyond going to court, I think that these various factions can come together and harmonize their their thought. Nigerian Labour Party is, is is an offshoot of the Nigerian Labour Congress. I think the leadership of the party, the leadership of the party, the National Working Committee of the party, and then the leadership of the Nigerian Labour Congress should come out and work out a solution of out of of course solution to solve oh. this particular imbalance and the party can, can move forward because the foundation for um, for democracy in in is is the, is the party system and if the party system uh, are not in proper order then you can have a democratic side all right uh gd johnson i'm just hang on i will take a quick break it's still um, the breakfast and i'm off the press um a segment i'll we'll be right back after this quick break here do join us again Welcome back. It's still up the press. And we still have Mr. Jide Johnson here with us, Senior Lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism. He's joining us from Lagos. Mr. Jide Johnson. Yeah, it's a pleasure right. to be with you. Thank yes. you. So let's move on now and go to the Guardian newspaper. The Guardian newspaper has an editorial, um, but it's, it's, it's their major headline here. After eight years and 5.9 billion naira on Nigeria Air, Minister scores self 100% on failed carrier, MRO, airport concessions. Please talk to us about this. <laughs> Is it not the minister that went to one of the Middle East countries for them to design the logo? The logo that I'll give to my student that they'll design for free or well, something we should have done a national competition on. And then I think they expended close to about 65 million, how much million, I can't recall. The humongous figure they used to design the logo, and then after designing the logo, they promised that um, the airline would start different dates were pronounced with respect to it. you spend 5.8 billion, and then there's there's no national career, and then you are you are giving yourself 100 percent. One of the most charlatan minister we have in this last in the, in the last eight years is is the minister of aviation. And then you know, in the second in the second time of Boris administration, it was used aviation used to be under 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 transportation. Then he was a junior minister with Amici as the substantive minister. But when about when um, Buhari won second term, he was made a substantive minister and he became full minister of aviation. And what do we have to show for it? Um, it's it's from one. From one misstep or the other, 5.8, and you are scoring yourself 5.9. 5 if you are explaining this amount of money, if you look at the amount, and I said it, I said it over time, and I have it on record, it's in the public domain, that by the time Buhari's administration will be true, the kind of corruption we will see will be unimaginable. You look at 5.9 billion spent on Nigeria here, you recall 1.2 billion used to, to purchase um, 12. 12 um, fire fire trucks for the mm. for the airport and then there's a particular story in which the the Na national population commission said they spent 200 billion on preparation on preparation for for the population census the way these people talk about 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 how they spend money and how they give themselves scorecard nigerians have even lost they've lost their sensitivity with respect to what is what is right what is normal and what is abnormal they just thought that okay, they can just use the platform of the media to just throw kind of figures to just justify and validate and validate their financial recklessness. Because I, I don't know how 
how these people sleep. You call it the cause of the week. The Minister of Education said that um, uh, uh, something that they did not is backward in education, giving one excuses or the other. And for the very first time, we had minister from the north, and then his minister of education for 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 the entire duration of Buhari's administration, and there was nothing he could do about it. Well, that's 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 what they have to show for it because. The bottom line is we have not held them accountable. Let me tell you. Let, let's tell ourselves the truth. We have not held them accountable. You have seen a situation whereby the watchdog has become the priest dog. When media organizations begin to have, begin to organize our world, they begin to organize our world and reward people that they should hold accountable. When the watchdog becomes the pet dog, when the pet dog become when the watchdog becomes the priest dog, when the watchdog becomes the lab dog, this is the kind of this is kind of stories you begin to see in, in, in the newspaper, justifying failure, rewarding, rewarding failure. Because I don't know, 5.9 billion for which career? And then if, 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 if that's the way Airpiece and other, other private operators, if that's the way they operate their own business, they will be out of business. They should be out of business. We knew many carriers that started with two, three aircraft. And for running the aircraft, with a private investment mentality. They've grown over the years. We've seen how they've grown over the years. But Nigeria, national carrier, we don't have. And somebody will sit down in one place and be scoring himself 100%. Well, he could score himself 100%. He's a minister from the from the state of, he's a minister, you see, he's a minister from the state of the president. So he's from, he's from Casina. So can get away with being mother. All right, uh, Jide, uh, still on the gadget before we move away from it completely. Uh, the Jura um, Bridge, uh, Joe Alokwa Bridge is actually making headlines. Uh, the Guardian uh, aptly captions it this way. Failed Ijara Bridge, residents blame shoddy job, lack of supervision. There's also talk of um, vandalism and all of that. I just want to get your quick response to that. Yeah, I, think, I, I was fortunate to go through that side when it was being constructed. I, 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 and um, my father was, was an engineer. Uh, uh, from, from the design of the bridge, I'm not an engineer, but from the design of the bridge and from the materials used for that, you you know that's an eventuality. It's just a matter of time. It's just it's just a matter of time. So, uh, if the resident, the residents are the greatest, the greatest uh, intelligence God gives to man is observation. That's why, as a kid, you learn to put food in your mouth and not in your nose because you observe people around you putting food in their mouth. So so if the people, the best people that can give us an eyewitness account of what happened, and then you know the greatest intelligence we gather in our industry is what we call the eyewitness account. So they are giving us an eyewitness account of what really transpired because they are the people that see what goes on on a daily basis when that bridge was being constructed and whether it was supervised or not supervised. In, in, in other climbs, those, the engineers that were involved in the construction of that bridge and the engineers from, from, the, from the ministry that were meant to supervise that bridge that signed up on that project, they will lose their license. They will lose their license. But what, what, what do we see? Rather than lose their license in Nigeria, they will get more jobs. Rather than, that, rather than lose their job, they will be promoted on the job for, for supervising Absolute nonsense. Absolute. Now, you put the life of people in danger, you waste government resources, and at the same time, you have nothing to show for it. And then somebody will go there and commission that project. Say they have, and then they will list that project as one of the achievements of government. Mr. Jide Johnson, you actually Sir, do not buy the narrative that it is as a result of vandalism. You believe it is at, because it was a shoddy job, not properly done. You see, there's there's no doubt that there's a need for us to have buy-in when you do public projects. For people to own the project is important. So when people own the project, there won't be vandalism. There's no doubt that we have cases of vandalism concerning that. However, you ask yourself this question. Are there security agencies in that area? Do you have a local government chairman in that area? Do you, in that local government, that's, that's a local government. You have, you have, you have, 
a DPU for that for that particular area. You have a DSS attached to the local government. You have NDDC attached to the local government in that in that particular in that particular in that particular area. Have you held those people accountable? Okay. Are we holding them accountable? Right. Are you getting my point? So yeah. how do you justify the security votes? For you, if you can't secure the lives and property of the people as well as the critical infrastructure of government, the thing is that the the the, the why do you have patrol vehicles for, for 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 security agencies? Why do we why do we make sure that we don't we don't we don't we don't look into the vote that governor has for their security vote? That should put to question the security vote of the governor of Lagos State. That should put to question whoever the commandant of that area. You know, you have military formation that are sent to superintend over that particular area. There's the command. There's there's also a, an AIG for that area. Then you have police commissioner. These are, these are people that we have entrusted with responsibility to secure our lives and property. So if things go wrong, all of them should be held accountable. But in Nigeria, because we don't hold people accountable, then they, they fail in their responsibility. Okay, it is very, very inherent in human nature to want to do evil, to want to destroy and circumvent the process. However, that's why you have law and order. If there is no law, there won't be order. The essence of law officers is to maintain order. Now, you have a disorder. What do you do? You go back to the law. What does the law say? Okay, the law says anyone that is caught destroying public infrastructure should go to jail. Then, since, since that's the law, then you begin to look at the law officers. Do they ensure that there is compliance with that law? Those are the ways to look at these things. All right, let's move on to the next uh, headline. It's 10 days to the swearing-in of president-elect. And uh, punch headlines is leading with Tinubu's inauguration here. Programs begin Thursday. Edgy invites over 65 world leaders. Respond to this, please. Well, uh, the, the one, the one uh, there's, there's, there's a particular um, other story actually to that major headline that government, federal government is looking at Coming up with a legal framework is not everything you sign law for. You have insurance memory. You have insurance memory. Now the office of the SGF. How did you do the transition in the in the past? What do you need to do? You come up with a comprehensive program, and then you have you have you have you have a white paper on it, and then you gazette it, and then everybody knows that this is this is the program order of program for transition when we have transition. Well, um, I, I, the the transition will take place. No doubt about that. And everything should be put in place for the transition to take place because you have a president elect as declared by INEC um, until there's a contrary decision by the by the court. It's it's is still the president, the president elect. So government, government is a continuum. It must it must it must continue. I hope a majority of the African leaders will come, no doubt about that. But the foreign leaders with what happened in Anambra and then um, the various security challenges that we have. I'm not too sure. Others from other developed countries will likely come, but hopefully, I think that they should come to support us, just like we have. Our president went to the coronation of the Queen, and there's no doubt that it would be nice for the Prime Minister of Great Britain also to respect that gesture. And our president has, has traveled; he has traveled in the last one year more than he has ever traveled under his in his, in his entire administration in his tenure. So I hope all of this. Of these leaders and um, come around to to support Nigeria in doing 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 a, a transition to to another another government. So it's, it's a welcome development. But on the program, the office of the Secretary General should come up with 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 with, with an order and then they gazette this and then uh, we, we have we have a format for doing for doing this and there seems to be back and forth with respect to what to do, what not to do. Another thing about the story is the confirmation of national award. And I think think of us just started that by confirming that out on on, on, on yeah, and people raise the question why do you confer an award on somebody that has not even performed a job? Well they said that well the award is conferred on them so as the, the highest national award so that they they can they can um, it will be to be to be it will it will spur them to work more because it will be a challenge to them. Uh, the other aspect which I look at it is that well you can confer that award after probably after after um, the court have ruled on the matter. 
and then there's no substantive case with respect to um, with respect to that particular election. There's no every, every issue has been dispensed with by the judiciary, and then the, the winner is declared finally, mm. and then you confer that on on on, on, the, on the actual on the actual winner of the election. If is the president elect that is eventually declared as the winner, then there was there was stands with him. And if, if there's a contrary, that means that you have given award to one person and then you give award to one person. I don't know, but in Nigeria, you know, we have a way of doing we have a way of doing things. And our way of doing things is very, 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 very unique and fundamental to the perspective with which our leaders look at things. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Jide Johnson, for your time and insight. Always a pleasure to have you join us to discuss the headlines on the National Dailies. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Have a wonderful weekend. And you, too. you too. I love your company. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, Mr. Jide Johnson, senior lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism, has joined us on Off the Press this morning. It is the Friday Flex edition of The Breakfast. We'll be back to take a look at the very first hot topic. And the only hot topic we'll be having today on Friday. Stay with us.